Welcome students to the class on decision making theory with special reference to Herbert Simon. Before we start with the meaning of decision making theory, it is important for us to understand the structure of this lecture. First, we will discuss the meaning of decision making. Second, we will discuss Herbert Simon's meaning of decision making. Thirdly, we will discuss different types of phases and types of decision making as elaborated by Herbert Simon. Fourthly, we will discuss different types of models of decision making which emerged as a critical response to Herbert Simon's decision making. And lastly, we will discuss the significance of decision making theory in the study of public administration. So, what do we understand by decision making? By decision making, we understand a process through which we prefer one set of decisions or actions over other alternative set of decisions. This process of decision making is influenced by three factors. One, the nature of human beings. It means few individuals are decisive or indecisive by nature. Second, the role of knowledge the way we gather our information, interpret our information or analyze our information that plays an important role in decision making. And lastly, the role of organizations and other personal factors. So the environment or the organization in which we operate and other personal factors play crucial role in influencing our decision making process. So, by decision making, we understand a course of our preferred rational choices over other set of alternatives or choices. Now, what do we understand by Herbert Simon's decision making process and why this process is so significant in the study of public administration? What we need to understand that in the study of public administration, decision making process is not only a part of theory, rather it's a kind of administrative behavior. Herbert Simon's decision making theory has emerged as a criticism against the classical theory of public administration. The classical theory of public administration has always emphasized the role of structures and different types of formal organizations. But Herbert Simon's decision making theory has emerged as a critical response to classical theory. Why? Because Herbert Simon has successfully pointed out that it is a kind of administrative behavior and decision making process pervades the entire administration. No organization and administration can function without the process of decision making. So, Herbert Simon had pointed out the fact that the study of public administration should not concentrate only on the course of action, rather the process of action. What do we understand by the process of action? It is basically the way decision makers take their decisions. Therefore, Herbert Simon's decision making theory has been extremely significant in the study of public administration because it is different from the classical theory and it has successfully described the notion of administrative man. The classical theory had propounded the theory of economic man that man is only motivated by economic factors. But Herbert Simon's theory of decision making has propagated the theory of administrative man that administration is extremely significant and decision making process is present at every sphere of organization and administration. Therefore, Herbert Simon's decision making is extremely significant in the study of public administration as it has opened up a new arena for discussion in this discipline. Now we are coming to Herbert Simon's specific definition of decision making. Herbert Simon has defined the process of decision making through a very important concept 
that is known as bounded rationality. In the beginning, when I was explaining the meaning of decision making, I mentioned that by decision making process, we understand one preferred rational choice over other courses of actions or choices. Herbert Simon's decision making process becomes very significant in the study of public administration because he developed a very significant concept known as bounded rationality. What is this bounded rationality? Herbert Simon mentioned that no action or decision can be 100% rational. It means all our decisions are influenced by subjective factors. That is why it is not possible for human beings to become totally economic man or rational man. Rather, all our decisions are very much influenced by our subjective factors and value judgments. That is why Herbert Simon mentioned that our decision making process is generally influenced by two types of factors. One, that is the value judgments or value premises and second, the reality or the empirical factors. So, bounded rationality leads to transformation in decision making process. It basically shows a shift from maximizing decisions to satisfying decisions. So what is maximizing decisions? According to classical thinkers, we always try to maximize our choices and decisions. But Herbert Simon mentioned that maximizing decision is not possible due to bounded rationality. And bounded rationality is an important factor in every organization. He also mentioned a number of factors which led to bounded rationality. For example, the dynamic nature of organization, second, imperfect information or lack of information. If we have problem in processing our information or interpreting our information, then we may have satisfying decisions. He also mentioned about factors like other external issues, time and cost factor, other organizational and personal factors. So all these factors play a significant role in giving rise to satisfying decisions which are combination of empirical and subjective factors. So decision making process is very much related to the environment in which we function. So, Herbert Simon's bounded rationality remains incomplete if we do not discuss the phases of decision making process. The phases of decision making process is generally marked by three important phases. One, intelligence phase, second, design phase and third, choice phase. These phases are very much applicable in most of our decision making processes. What do we understand by intelligence phase? By intelligence phase, we understand that the decision makers spend a lot of time in identifying different types of socio-economic, political and other organizational problems. Therefore, intelligence phase highlights the existence of different types of problems. Now we are coming to design phase. What do we understand by design phase? When we are surrounded by different types of problems in organization or our personal lives, we always look for alternatives. So once we identify the problems, the decision making process or the decision makers always look for multiple courses of actions or alternatives to solve the problems. And lastly, the choice phase. The choice phase is the ultimate phase which completes the decision making. So out of multiple alternative processes or choices or factors, we prefer one solution as decision or rational choice over other alternatives. So that completes our decision making process. So this entire decision making process as elaborated by Herbert Simon had identified three important stages of decision making. One, identifying the problems. Second, 
searching and researching for multiple courses of action and prioritizing those actions as solutions. And the last one is choice phase. It highlights the decision making process where we prefer one rational decision making or decision over other choices or alternatives. Now we are coming to different types of decisions as mentioned by Herbert Simon. In every organization as mentioned by Herbert Simon, there are different types of decisions in every organization and Herbert Simon has divided these decisions in the following manner. The most important decision which we can see in every organization can be named as programmed and non-programmed decisions. Programmed decisions are those which are routine, based on reputation and generally meant to solve organizational problems. So programmed decisions are very much part of the survival of organizations. But non-programmed decisions are those which are not based on routine, rather these are creative, these are novel and these are unstructured. Therefore, programmed decisions are structured and unprogrammed or non-programmed decisions are non-structured. It is said that programmed decisions are also known as generic decisions and non-programmed decisions are known as unique decisions. Programmed decisions are used for overall functioning of the organization while the creative and non-programmed decisions are meant for unique problems arising in the organization. Another type of decision is related to personal and organizational decisions. By organizational decisions, we understand executives taking decisions under their organizational capacity. But personal decisions are those decisions where decisions are taken under personal capacity. Apart from these two types of decisions, another very significant type of decision is policy and operating decisions. Policy decisions always highlight the fundamental character of the organization while the operating decisions highlight the execution of the policy decisions. So policy decisions always signify the fundamental character or nature of the organization. Apart from this, there are also individual and group decisions. It is based on the number of individuals involved in decision making. After these types of decision making or different types of decisions, it is important to understand different types of models which have emerged as a critical response to Herbert Simon's decision making. The first important critique of Herbert Simon's decision making is done by incremental model. What is this incremental model? According to this model, decision making process cannot be based on always rationality or bounded rationality. Rather, the factors like politics, money and other subjective factors influence the decision making process. This incremental model has also highlighted the fact that the past experiences of the decision makers always influence the future decisions. Another critique is developed by mixed scan model. What is this mixed scan model? This highlights a need for blending both rationalism and incrementalism. However, this mixed scan model highlights the fact that incremental model always overlooks the need for social innovation in decision making. There is a need to blend rationality as well as incremental attitude while we are making our decisions. Another kind of model is there which is known as optimum model. This optimum model claims that it is the best model for decision making because it's a perfect blending of economic model and rationality choice model. 
Apart from all these models as critics, there are also Weber's bureaucratic model, which propagates the fact that rationality is always used by the bureaucrats and bureaucrats as a special class enforce the rules and regulations in decision making. So these are the models which highlight that Simon's bounded rationality is also subjected to multiple factors rather multiple criticisms. Even bounded rationality is subjected to sub different types of value judgments and factors. What we need to understand that this theory will remain incomplete if we do not discuss the significance of this theory in the study of public administration. As I have mentioned in my introduction that this theory is not a theory on decision making, rather it highlights a need for studying administrative behavior in organization. Simon had continuously mentioned the fact that this theory was a perfect combination of two factors, one theoretical propositions and second methodology. So this methodology was based on logical positivism which reflects the cause and effect relationship. Therefore, this theory has highlighted a new kind of administrative behavior which has aspired for empiricism and science in administration. Another very significant contribution of Herbert Simon is that he has challenged the normative theories of public administration and has asked for empirical theories in public administration. Therefore, these theories become extremely significant in our modern days and in the discipline of public administration.